So, what we're doing in this little episode today is we are going to be doing the, I think it's commonly referred to as the 1MZ hack. Uh, one of my sons has a 2000 Toyota Avalon. It has the Toyota 1MZ FE engine in it. Uh, with that is a known issue that the wires that run under the intake manifold that run to the NOx sensor over the years, over heat, everything, they get jacked up. They don't work very well and then starts throwing a check engine light for your NOx sensors, one or both of them. There are a few different hacks out there to get by this. Like if you have one that's still reporting as working, you can splice a wire, make it work, so on and so forth. His car shows neither of them are working. This car, when we first got it, had an overheating issue. Um, that's a whole different story. But between him driving it and letting it cook a little too much and some a thing or two that a shop had done, the car had a lot of overheating issues, and I think that helped accelerate the death of the uh, wiring to the NOx sensors. So with that, the car's got 300,000 miles on it, and we're just going to do the hack that some people have done. Uh, what, what version of the hack I'm going to be doing is drilling a hole into one of the motor mounts. It's a, I think it's called the dog bone motor mount. I'll show a picture when we get to it. Drill a hole into that, mount the knock sensor into that. This is a Beck Arnley knock sensor. I'm hoping it will work. Part number 1580780. And then also bought with that a new harness. Now to replace this harness properly, we'd have to remove the entire intake manifold and a whole lot of other crap with it just to access it. We're just trying to do this cheap. The engine appears fine for what it is and we're just riding it out. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video, I don't recommend this if you feel like copying this, it's do it your own risk because it more or less faking a signal of the NOx sensor to the ECU. So the ECU will no longer correct if it sees a knock. So with that said, do it your own risk. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these two wires here, splice them into one wire run that wire to the new knock sensor location. And what I'm hoping to do is keep it so it can easily be reversed if you kept this car longer, decide to fix it or whatever. But with that little bit of knowledge, um, I want to explain why I want to just splice it here and run the two signals. This wire or this harness each plug has a single wire running to it but for each plug there's a negative in this plug because this wire here is shielded to prevent interference so i want to keep that shielding intact splice these together hopefully have it not be an insanely long wire and just reuse this connector and plug in that's the plan You'll get to see it more as I run through it. But with that, I will now go through, cut this. I'll just cut it off camera real quick, splice them together so you can kind of see. And I'll try and show you a little closer. But anyway, let me get going. So as a quick little intermission, see now you can see clearly here's the white wire. Here's the shielding that it goes that covers it. This is supposed to prevent interference from other electrical signals, things like that, or that are immediately around it. From what I understand, knock sensors are very picky and the ECU is probably a little overly sensitive. So there's that. And if you can, I'm hoping 
the camera will kind of pick this up. But if not, well, take my word for it. Um, oh, we'll see. So in here, you see the white wire. There's two of them. And then you see black wire. There's two of them. The black is going to uh, the shielding here. So it grounds it out. So my goal is to keep as much of that intact. I might end up, depending on the length of the wire that I make to come off of here, I might shield that also. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to go chop those off now and make it into one wire. Hooray! So here's the current result of the harness. I cut off both plugs. Um, what I had to do to prevent chopping off any of the shielding on this wire, I put just a little extended wire ah, there to meet up with the other wire. And at that point, I twisted them and put this overly long wire here. So then that way, once I get the car in place, I have extra that I can cut off instead of uh, going too short or something like that. So yeah, two wires into one. Now, next part is to start drilling a hole in the car. So once it's here, I'll start working on it. So here's the first part. The sensor is installed. If you saw, I was grinding that metal down because I suck at placement. So in most cases, you would not need to grind that metal down. But next thing I'm going to do is find the damn wire over there and start hooking shit up. So there's the damn plug. You can just kind of see it sin exposed. It was plugged in right under here. Lots of grime and build up, so you gotta work it off. But yeah, there's a little bastard behind the hoses. So now I'll hook up the new one. 
and see where that takes us. So here we are, reassembled. Um, if you had the engine bay cover that this car used to have, you wouldn't see any of this. Uh, the tools used were do 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 this thing, which if I look at my hand where I wrote it, is a uh, one fourth tap minus eighteen or dash eighteen believe it's NPT, whatever. The drill bit I used, not big enough. Um, it's just aluminum that you're cutting into, so it's actually pretty easy. It, whatever you, you're using to drill goes right through it. Now, whether this works or not, I don't know. Uh, first thing I'm going to do though, is reset the ECU, whichever one they are. Let's find out. Well, looks like it is, uh, you see there, EFI number two, and then EFI number one, which is, here's EFI number one. Drop that off. EFI number two. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to let it sit and go eat dinner. Not sure how this video is going to look here. But we are in the troubled car. The Avalon. Uh, I have it warmed up. After resetting the ECU, there's no lights. Now we're gonna see, you know, if they uh, don't come on. Because I have no idea what to expect. Do, 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 do. Makes so many noises. Well, that didn't seem so bad. Last time he drove it, so I had reset the ECU just because it had a lot of errors that appeared to be building up you know through something about both o2 sensors things like that so i cleared them by pulling the fuses and told them to give it a spin well yeah i would say that maybe it's okay He'll have to let me know shortly because he's going to take his friend home, going to tell him to drive it cautiously. But looks promising. I will let you know shortly. Well, it looks like I get to close out this video on a positive note. It appears the 1MZ hack worked to get rid of the check engine light. Didn't fix anything, just got rid of the light because the wiring under the intake manifold is toast. With that said, just a friendly reminder, do at your own risk because by taking the knock sensors out of the equation, it could cause damage to the engine. In this case, I didn't worry about it. It's got 300 plus thousand miles on it, 
still have signs that there's probably a little head gasket leak somewhere allowing exhaust fumes into the coolant we don't care about that just keep the car going it appears to engine still appears to be running great ish um but yeah it took me a lot longer than it should have. I did not have all the tools needed. The thread, you know, the tap, I didn't have one that was the right size. The one that would work perfectly for the knock sensor apparently is an M12 with a 1.25 thread pitch. That would work. I could not find one. Probably could have ordered one, but alas, I didn't. Um... The wiring was pretty straightforward. I went the path of going to Rock Auto, bleh, 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 bleh. going to Rock Auto, ordering a knock sensor, one, ordering the new harness, chopping that up, and using one of the new plugs at the end of the single wire running to one knock sensor. Um, you saw me take it for a spin, seemed fine. Uh, the kid they did it for. He just drove 20 plus miles and still no check engine light where before when we reset the computer, then it threw a code for the check engine light within half a mile. Like he just did some casual driving and then came on. This case, he took it 20 miles on the freeway and all looks good. So, in conclusion, do at your own risk. And he, use higher octane if you decide to take the knock sensor out of the equation. Anyway, hope you found it semi-useful. Blah, blah, blah. Have a good day. Bye-bye.